Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron's. It's been a interesting day of weather across West Michigan, kind of chilly and one that brought some heavier snows to the northern regions and a lot of rain across the southern portions of West Michigan. But now that all of that has moved on, we are going to get ready for a quieter but cooler night ahead. The temperatures today, though, they were kind of spread out across the board. We had as cool as 33 for the high in Big Rapids, 37 this afternoon in Grand Rapids, and 44 down in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. Keep in mind the average is 48 for this time of the year, so nowhere in West Michigan hit where we should be for this time of March. Those temperatures out there, though, were within our 3 degree guarantee. We told you 38 hit 37 for today. Current accuracy streak at two days in a row. Tomorrow, good news for the temperatures. They are on the way up. Up. 13 weather ball lit up in red as those warmer temperatures are ahead, but remains blinking bright because while while one round of rain and snow is done, we have another round that could come through as we head through late tomorrow and into tomorrow evening. View of the 13 weather ball sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. The winds out there, they're still a factor this evening, though they are improving in terms of the winds getting a little bit lighter as we head through this evening. Still as of about 10 o'clock, though, seeing gust up to 20 to 30 miles per hour. This will continue to drop as we head through tonight, but even the wind that does stick around will keep wind chills a factor out there. Feels about 10 degrees colder across the board compared to the air temperatures out there. We'll see that continue as we head through this evening and into the early part of your Sunday. The good news is, though, the clearing pattern will let some sunshine through as we kick off the day tomorrow. Those temperatures will go from the upper 20s to start your Sunday into the mid 40s by the afternoon. The cloud cover, though, comes back in and then rain and some rain snow mix will be possible as we head through the second half of tomorrow and into tomorrow evening. So keep the rain gear ready to go. As for tonight, though, the flurries, what remains of them comes to an end and skies clear. Temperature will drop to about 27 here in Grand Rapids, 44 for tomorrow in the city. We'll see 41 Monday with quieter weather, just a touch cooler as we head into the start of the work week. The radar as of about 10 o'clock again shows most of the snow activity is now done. The system that brought it pushing off toward the east and the clearing sky is about halfway across Lake Michigan, even working their way down into Berrien County at this hour. We'll see that continue to overspread the region tonight with again clearing conditions that take over as we head toward the early hours of Sunday we will be partly cloudy to mostly cloudy as we get through the first half of the day tomorrow with the rain snow chances starting to pick up as we head towards Sunday afternoon. I think any kind of snow accumulation from this is pretty much going to be minimal, but once you get to 96 and north, that's the best chance to see a little bit of snowfall. Maybe another inch or two in some spots that could come with this little burst of wintry weather, but it's on and out of here as we head towards Sunday night and Monday morning. So no effect from this will be felt for Monday morning's commute. It's just going to be a pretty quiet one as we start the work week. Fast forwarding from Monday toward Wednesday, though, we're not done with the chances for snow in this forecast, which is unfortunate because we should uh, start to get more into springy weather for this time of the year. We are officially now in spring, but as we head through Wednesday, here comes another burst of rain and snow across the region. This quickly moves through. In fact, it's gone by Wednesday evening. So again, much like what comes tomorrow, we're not going to see any real accumulation potential from this, and then we're back to quiet weather as we head into Thursday, but that doesn't last long. Big flow of warm air comes through, boosting temperatures all day Thursday and into the day on Friday, but it's going to come with rain and possibly some thunderstorm chances. You can see the rain overspreading the region through Friday. Some of the darker greens in here, some heavier rain, and again, maybe a thunderstorm or two that can't be ruled out across the region. Doesn't look like any kind of strong weather as of right now, but rumbles of thunder would not be surprising. This too can't stay in one season. We have the spring rain, but we switch right back to rain and snow on schedule next weekend comes every weekend. Here it comes again next Saturday. Rain and snow push through West Michigan gone by the time we head toward the second half of next weekend with quiet weather wrapping up the next week. So we'll have to keep a close eye on this, but again, kind of looks like we're stuck in a pretty similar pattern to what we've seen across the region, though. This one does come up some warmer temperatures on the front end. Speaking of warmer temperatures, we see them first tomorrow 40s across the region as we head throughout the lake shore on Sunday. Those windy conditions backing down fairly calm winds tomorrow. Variable winds around three to eight miles per hour. The northern zones definitely going to see a warm up compared 
to today. Look for low 40s for the highs tomorrow. We'll see temperatures mid to upper 40s from Grand Rapids down to Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. <laughs> Temperatures stay in the 40s for the first part of the forecast, and then we see that big warm up come as we head toward Thursday. I think we're going to push temperatures upper 50s, low 60s as we get into Friday. That's why we have that risk for some thunderstorms in there as that warm air clashes with some cold air that comes in for Saturday as rain and snow comes back to the picture. Those temperatures rebound though very quickly. We're back into the 50s by the end of the 10 day, again with another chance for a couple thunderstorms. This past week was Severe Weather Awareness Week in West Michigan, and now that the week is drawing to a close, it's time to take a look back at the stories we've told over the last several days. To kick the week off, back on Monday, Chief Meteorologist George Lessons gave us a look at the tornado that tore through Gaylord nearly one year ago. This is Michigan Severe Weather Awareness Week, and the 13 on your side meteorologists will look back at one of last year's biggest storms. How to plan for this year's severe weather season, and separate fact from fiction by debunking weather myths. Nearly one year ago on May 20th, 2022, the city of Gaylord was hit with the strongest tornado in its history. On that Friday afternoon, thunderstorms roar across northern lower Michigan, producing damaging winds, large hail, and an EF3 tornado. Three days earlier, the Storm Prediction Center forecasts possible severe weather from lower Michigan to Texas. It follows up with a slight risk, or a 2 out of 5, in its forecasts Wednesday and Thursday, and again on that Friday. As morning thunderstorms depart Wisconsin, they strengthen as they cross Lake Michigan. Anticipating a severe weather outbreak, SPC issues a severe thunderstorm watch just before 2 p.m. for hail up to 2 inches, winds to 70 miles per hour, and the possibility of a tornado or two. Within 15 minutes, the National Weather Service in Gaylord issues a severe thunderstorm warning for Leelanau, Benzie, and Grand Traverse counties for damaging winds and large hail. Around 2.30, 76 mile per hour winds slam into the Frankfurt Lighthouse at Lake Michigan, followed by wind damage near Glen Arbor and Leland. Two more severe thunderstorm warnings are issued at 2.45 and 3.25 p.m. ahead of the storms for Antrim, Kalkaska, Otsego, and Charlevoix counties as large hail and 70-plus mile-per-hour winds strike Alba and Elmira. At this point, the thunderstorm damage threat had become considerable. Ten minutes later, at 3.35, the supercell thunderstorm spawns a tornado about six miles south of Elmira, moving northeast towards Gaylord at about 50 miles per hour. A tornado warning is immediately issued for Antrim and Otsego counties, with a tornado expected to reach Gaylord by 3.45 p.m. and Vanderbilt and Spar around 3.55 p.m. It's very windy. It's Hail it's and high winds accompany the storm as the tornado enters Gaylord at 3.48 p.m. The tornado crosses M32 on the west side and then I-75 on the north side before lifting about one mile northeast of Spar around 3.55 p.m. The severe storms raced northeast, reaching Lake Huron by late afternoon. Rescue and recovery efforts begin immediately. 44 people suffered injuries, while two individuals lost their lives. Damage surveys rate the tornado as an EF3, the strongest on record for northern Lower Michigan. In its 20-minute rampage, it traveled nearly 17 miles, producing 150 mile per hour winds up to 200 yards wide. Next up, meteorologist Samantha Jacks looks at how Gaylord is recovering and what the community is doing going forward to prepare for severe weather season. Neighbors' houses, our, our business partners' houses, um, businesses themselves, commercial spaces, mm -hmm. um, all completely taken out in, a, in the blink of an eye, really. Nearly one year ago, an EF3 tornado ripped through this town, leaving behind an 18-mile-long path of destruction killing two and injuring dozens more. Severe weather can happen anywhere, anytime, and to anyone, and this town knows that best. Oh my God, look at it. The, the radar imagery was very textbook, very much a supercell that was uh, producing a, a pretty strong tornado. The top priority is to get the warning out. 
The warning was issued, but response time was limited. Received a text at 3.22 p.m., kind of mm -hmm. finishing up the day at the office um, on a Friday afternoon, and at 3.47, the tornado begins rolling by us at work. So I had left the store just a few minutes before it hit. Uh, I was in my car. I, my cell phone went off about the uh, warning, the tornado warning that there was one in Gaylord. So I turned around and went back to the store. And by the time I was there, the damage was already done. Stories like this all across town. Businesses destroyed. Uh, just the inside of the store is just demolished. Cars tossed. And that right there, that car, that yes. was one that you had pointed out to me just a second ago. Yes, um, that car in particular speaks out to me as we, um, again, we're doing work in this area. Saw many cars flipped over, including that one. Many have spent the last 11 months rebuilding. You know, I do truly believe that the worst of times bring out the best of times in people, and you certainly saw that on display um, in the Gaylor community following um, the May 20th tornado. But the memories continue. Um, again, to, for 15 minutes to take so much from so many is um, you know, truly, truly a humbling and heartbreaking experience. You know, it, it instilled some fear in people that uh, before probably didn't take it as seriously as they should have. Again, I, I mean, I spent most of my life in Tornado Alley and they're quite frequent uh, almost every summer. Uh, but here, you know, it was, it was a shock. Us meteorologists agree this storm was rare. We don't typically see a larger severe weather event like that up here in northern Michigan. So for it to happen in Little Gaylord where it's not really that common, that's definitely a testament to say that it could certainly happen wherever it wants to in the state of Michigan, including the Grand Rapids area. Which is why the time is now to prepare. Have plans, make, make, have something ready so that if uh, there is a, a warning that you know what to do. I mean, that's what saved our folks. A vital part of severe weather preparedness in West Michigan and around the country is storm spotters and a, another class of spotters had the chance to take in the training earlier today in Battle Creek. The class can be seen here at Kellogg Community College where about 50 to 60 residents came out this morning from 10 o'clock to noon to listen to the National Weather Service give their presentation about how to spot different severe weather features and how to do so safely. This is the first round of classes this year since COVID back in uh, 2020. The last class was in 2019, so a lot of people are getting a refresher. And if you miss this class, there's still a chance for you to take in some upcoming spotter trainings. There's two more on the schedule. April 15th, Saturday in Alma, that's at 10 a.m. And April 22nd, another Saturday at 10 a.m., this time in Muskegon. Details can be found at weather.gov slash GRR slash spotter training. And now you're up to date on the latest forecast and some weather news from this past severe weather week around West Michigan. You can always find more online at 13onyourside.com or by downloading the 13 on Your Side news and weather apps. For now, thanks for watching 13 Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens.